Episode 32, Southern Edge of Highwood. The scents tell of danger, Yalra. We should not be here, whispered the enormous bull nosh, a massive bulk of four-legged muscle as deep brown as the woods. His large eyes drooped sadly even when he was happy. The small, blue-skinned sylph's wings batted nervously as her big, liquid blue eyes searched the forest edge for an old pylon of Everleaf. Her white hair flowed in the breeze as if she were underwater. With her tiny right hand, she held on to the bullnosh's hanging ear. The two fairies were exiles of Everleaf, and both were the last of their kind. Unwelcome among most of the Fey and the Athrodoc, unwilling to take sides in an ancient controversy, exiled fairies made their homes away from Everleaf Pines and in Chandris Domain, the two greatest of fairy-occupied forests. Many, like Yalra and Bulnash, simply wandered, ever hunting the forests where fairies hid, some ignoring them while others chased them away. You already said that, Bulnash. You're saying the same things all over again. The sylph felt a stirring in her soul. Something deep in the mysterious wood drew her in. Bulnash, too, felt the pull on his heart, but unlike Yalra, he also smelled very dangerous plants that would do injury to a fairy. Not even the mighty fae and Athrodoc fairies ever ventured into high wood. Called Dorwood Hill of old, the wise in border realm shunned this evil wood. Even humans do not come here. Huge brown eyes beneath a scarred brow bone scan the shadows beyond the trunks and bushes. The hearing and the sight of Bulnosh was superior to hers. There is something special here. I feel it. Yalra's beautiful face searched the trees with intensity. Let us go back to Feynot on the water. Old Treebender loves our singing. The Dryators, they want, we want to learn from them. The Lily Constrictor does not like me. Bulnash sighed. He knew she was determined. He wanted to go back to put distance between them and this forest. Back in Feynot on the water, the Knot Fairies, especially the Twigworts, they made them feel welcome. Yalra's insatiable curiosity kept them ever burrowing in unfamiliar places. We're going to Narwood Reach next. We promised the Fobolds and Isker too that we would sing the pylons. Bulnosh hated Narwood Reach. That forest was full of nests of hyena mice. Yalra could walk and giggle among the mice that hung from branches out of reach from the hanging from their tails, but when Bulnosh walked among them, they alerted the whole forest with their howling. The pylons of Everleaf were a megalithic work of the infamous race of war sloths. Throughout Border Realm and beyond in other locations in Dagathar, the war sloths over thousands of years had erected hundreds of these pylons, two giant squared pillars with a lintel stone, dolmens. Each pylon was erected at a specific site where something monumental had happened. They boasted a detailed description carved by the sloths of what had happened at each location. Bulnosh and Yalra had spent almost two centuries in their travels locating the old pylons and making songs of all their inscriptions. They had snuck into Everleaf, Enchandris, Treehelm, the outskirts of mighty Splinter Dark searched all of Narwood, Reach, and Feynot on the water, Arbor Realm, all the way up to the timber line of Drake Roost Mountains and around Ada Lake to distant Titan Oaks, collecting songs and singing to pockets of exiles of the mighty deeds of fairy history. But never had the two ventured into Highwood. At that instant, Bulnosh's ear twitched and Yalra's fingers tightened on it, still clinging to his ear. What is it? Yalra's cicada wings. 
almost as clear as morning dew, flattened against her back. Bullnosh started to move through the trees. I see munch, I see munch root, Yalra. Her wings fluttered excitedly as the bulbous red and white mushrooms came into view. She plucked a small one into her delicate mouth and chewed happily. Bullnosh foraged eating many fat mu munch roots. A wash of energy filled their tired bodies. Their eyes widened, pupils enlarged, cuts and abrasions, soreness all healed in seconds. Their senses heightened and bodies began giving off heat. I love Munchroot. Elder Bose feeds fairies even far away. Bullnosh smiled and chewed. She had said those words like a mantra thousands of times in the last three centuries of their wandering together, and when burning munch root, it never got old. Thinking more clearly, Bullnosh realized that they were in the right area described to them in detail long ago by the Hoghimoth, a gigantic dire boar named Malagor, who had many years ago skirted the edges of Highwood a few times. He had told them how to find the forgotten pylon and about the dangers of the forest. Now the Hoghimoth rarely left the safety of Narwood Reach. Yalra sat down listening to the bird songs in the lengthening shadows. Above her, the birds sang in the sunlight. Bulnosh inhaled the taste of the trees and all that was among them, of rich soil and old bark, unfamiliar since. Seeing better in the darkening light, he froze, flanks tightening. Yalra, look about. The sylph popped out of her musings to see five small, green-brown figures looking at them, black eyes curiously blinking. They approached Yalra slowly, glancing apprehensively at the hulking bullnosh. A sixth one watched from afar. They're pteranoids, bullnosh! Their little faces lit up to hear the sylph's sylvan words. He watched warily as the pteranoids touched Yalra. They were sharing. The practice of exchanging histories, memories, intent, feelings, desires, needs, experiences. He knew Yalra had nothing to fear, fear for sylphs or air elemental fairy kind and kin to the earth elemental pteranoid fairies. But they were Phalorn from of old long separated from the other fey and Athridoc, ancient breeds of fairies that wandered away thousands of years before the rift. Rebels from before they were exiles. Yalra may be safe, but they can confuse and bewilder, bewilder me, change the landscape to get me lost, Bulnosh warned himself, elder bread still coursing through his entire being. Feeling left out, the sixth pteranoid waddled closer to join in the sharing. Yalra reached to hold Bulnosh's ear at the same time when suddenly she froze. Bulnosh, I found it, she chirped excitedly. It's right where Malagor said, opposite side of a creek just over a hill. The Terranoids have seen it? Yes, they showed it to me. We will have a new song. Through the trees over a small hillock, Bulnosh noticed the darkening of the sky. They crossed the shallow creek, countless little frogs leaping out of their path. He recalled the words of the hoggy moth. The creek leads out of the wood toward Arbor Realm. Emerging from the creek ravine, they stopped at the patch of darkness, a dozen large trees casting the area in shadow, half concealing an old trilithon. The sylph stared in awe of the pylon of Everleaf. The bullnosh stared surprised at the vine-woven basket full of mushrooms. Someone is here, harvesting munch root. He saw that the pteranoids lost interest and went back to their study of lichens and mosses, spiderwebs, a rabbit hole, exposed roots, and a tall fern. Two looked closely at a fallen branch with a bird's nest. The pteranoids are not the ones filling this basket, he thought. Yalra fluttered her wings and leapt up to stand on Bulnosh's back, reading the stone inscription, even, through, even though a fairy forgets nothing when burning Munchroot, the white-haired sylph carefully read it twice. As she did, a worry nod at Bulnosh. Hurry, Yalra, we cannot tarry. Then did the locusts up the creek go silent. Bulnosh's ears twitched. 
Bird songs of warning growing frantic in the trees. Run, run, run! Out of the woods, scream the pteranoids telepathically. In a flash, the bullnosh's mighty hooves tore deep ruts in the soil, propelling his great bulk rapidly through the trunks of very old trees. He ran on instinct, heavy and large, and burning muntroop fueling his wild sprint. Yalra rode astride his back, holding his ears, her wispy hair trailing behind. Shadowy trees whisked by as the sun went down. Only high in the upper trees could the light of the dying day still be seen. A hot sensation worried Yalra's leg, and she glanced down to see splotches of red paint. Her skin burned, but the muntroot made it tolerable. Bullnosh hissed as red liquid spattered his rump. He lunged forward, tearing up clumps of earth along the ravine beside the creek. Behind us, he grunted, laboring to maintain the bone-jarring speed. The sylph turned around to see what was and was instantly struck across the face with crimson fluid. Spitting out the foul goo and wiping her face despite the burning, she beheld the attacker buzzing through the air behind them, barely able to keep their pace. Wicked pixie! Yara ducked as red ochre shot over her head. Two more vicious ochre pixies drew behind the first. All three advanced, their tiny hands building balls of ochre essence. Still burning elderbred, Yalra disregarded the pain. She pointed at the lead pixie and barked. A melon-sized blue clear bubble appeared and floated toward a round-eyed pixie that barely darted out of its path. The pixie behind her squealed, but the noise was cut off when she found herself trapped in the peculiar bubble which lazily flipped her upside down and began to rise into the limbs of a tree. A flash of red paint, paint uh, painted a nearby tree as Bullnosh stormed around it while the two remaining pixies, a male and a female, piped obscenities at Yalra before stopping, stopping their pursuit to give chase upward toward their imprisoned kin. Bullnosh's powerful legs plowed his massive body onward, a fear sapping away his munchroot high. His eyes darted left and right, behind and ahead. Through, though, though passing through trees and bramble, he caught a glimpse of a large shadow with curled talons running in the wood, almost keeping pace. He suspected the pixies were a diversion. The dark pursuer chased them on two legs. More trees blocked Bullnosh's view. The shadow reappeared, but lower. It was now running on four legs. Its scent was death a shape-changer. Bullnosh gathered his last strength and sprinted forth. He never forgot a scent. Phalorn. The munch root was wearing off. He could not remember the warning of the hoggy moth clearly. It fears neither thorn maidens nor war sloths. The creek turned, plunging through a thicket scattering rabbits that bolted in three directions. Bullnosh and Yalra burst through a veil of hanging ivy and out of highwood as the sun disappeared over the western horizon. Above, no stars lit the blackening sky. Bullnosh trampled over the plain through the tall grasses, slowing down but putting distance between them and the forest's edge. He came to a stop, flanks heaving and he took in the air. As he searched the outskirts of the forest, Yalra giggled on his back. He realized that she knew nothing of their murderous pursuer. What? Bullnosh sucked in air as he started walking toward the distant eaves of Arbor Realm. What is so funny? Yalra pulled on his fur. We have a new song, and I met some pteranoids. You found the elderbred, and we read the lost pylon. We never been to Highwood before, and we got attacked by wicked pixies, and I, and I fought them off, and we escaped. We have to put it all in the song, Bullnosh. Okay, by morning it will rain. For now, we'll bid down not far from here. Arbor Realm to the Spruce Burrow. This concludes Episode 32.